Jared Ogumbemi Jackson. First, about your name. I, you hear a lot of people pronouncing your name. Some of them say Jackson, the other one says Ogum, yeah. Ogumbemi Jackson. What do you prefer that, that they use your name? Ogumbemi. So, Ogumbemi. And what about the Jackson part? The Jackson, yeah. Ogumbemi Jackson. It fits together. The, the, the full name, yes. Yeah. And why is that name? <coughs> How's, uh, uh, so, originally, Ogumbemi is my father's name, and that's he's Nigerian. So, it's from uh, the Yoruba tribe, and Jackson is a name that he added on when he moved to Canada. So he... you got a Canadian mother. Uh, my mother is Jamaican. Jamaican. And she also moved to Canada, and my parents met there. So they, they were globetrotters, kind of like myself. My dad went from <clears throat> Nigeria to Madrid at 18, and he lived in Madrid for two years. And then from there, he went to Canada. My mother moved from Jamaica to Scotland, and she did her nursing out there. And she was in Scotland for five years. And then they moved to Canada and met. And then from there, my dad added on Jackson when he got to Canada. Okay. Talking about your family, how's the, <coughs> how's, how's the family build up? Your parents and you got any brothers or sisters? Yeah, I have one older brother and one older sister, so I'm the youngest in the family. And what do they family. do, your brother and sister? My brother, he's a correctional officer, so he works in a prison. And my sister, she, she works in, um, in a, how, how would you describe it? She works in a field where it's a lot of education and she's teaching kids and youth programs how to use specific educational skills, whether that's like coding or science or math or whatever the case may be. And she's like behind the scenes of, of uh, creating those programs for younger kids. Do you have a lot of contact with your <clears throat> brother and sister? Oh, yeah. Every, Daily? Every other day. Uh, every other day. I, I think I was on the phone with my brother yesterday for How do you do that? Hour. FaceTime? or Yeah, always on FaceTime. You know, we got to work around the schedule of obviously it's a seven hour difference between here and back home. And uh Whenever they're av available, we'll talk, or my mom and my dad. So I'm, I'm in constant contact with them, and uh, that's always something that my dad preached to me at a young age was that you know family is most important is most important thing more than money, more than your work, more than everything, because they were there before you had anything, you know. So. And how do you deal with situations that you're far away from home and not close to your family, especially now in Corona time? <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm used to it. Uh, like I left home when I was 17 for university when I went to University of Calgary, so. Um, it was still in Canada, but it was in another city, in another province. So I was already learning how to cope with being away from my parents, being away from my family. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to take that opportunity of going to University of Calgary was to first obviously get my degree and you know get good education and learn from great players and a great coaching staff and a great basketball program in Western Canada, but also to prepare myself for the future because I always had aspirations of being a professional basketball player to learn how to navigate and mature as a young man being away from home. And now you are a professional basketball player. You played in a lot of countries before, in Portugal, Spain, France, Finland. If you look at it now, at your life as being a professional basketball player, did it work out the way that you wanted it to be? Yes. Um, I'm a true believer in uh, manifesting your life. So I'm a true believer in what you say, like the words you use, what you think about, you're going to create like the law of attraction is what it's called. You're going to create instances of that in your life if you really focus on that. So I remember when I was 13 years old, 12 years old, I was always like, oh, I'd love to be a basketball player. I'm going to play in Europe and I'm going to travel. I'm going to meet uh, my wife out there one day. And, and But that was my thought. And then I put the effort into it. So like the things that I'm living now, uh, the opportunities I've had to travel all over the world and see different cultures and different, meet different people and play for different organizations, like, it's not a shock to me. Like, I'm, I don't say that in a cocky way, but this was always something I was aiming towards as a young kid, and it was something that I, I wrote down on pieces of paper. I spoke about, I spoke it into existence, and I'm here now. You said earlier meeting my wife, maybe somewhere in Europe. How did that work out? Uh, well, uh, I haven't, I'm not married yet, but uh, when I was in France, um, I met a young lady out there. and uh, I What's speak, her name? Uh, Ketsia. Ketsia. Yeah, so I speak French, and um, so I wasn't sure how that was going to work because I, I, I took French for 10 years in school, so from kindergarten to grade 10, every In Canada? In Canada. Why is that? Why did you learn so much French? Um, my parents decided to put me in French immersion. So basically how it works is normally you'd be in English class and then you'd have one subject of French or you could be in French immersion and that way every subject you take is in French. So 
biology, mathematics, history, gym class, everything I did was in French for 10 years straight. So that's how I learned. So getting back to your girlfriend? Yeah, so from there, uh, yeah, so I met her. Um, uh, I think she, her brother had a wedding. Um, uh, her brother had a wedding in the city I was in, and I saw a picture, and I went from there and reached out, and we started talking, and it was very, very genuine, very, very natural, and, you know, I had her come and watch one of our games. She had never really seen a basketball game before, so that was her first time watching a basketball game, and from there, we just hit it off, and... Now you have a relationship. Yes. But yes. not married yet. No, not yet. And not how yet. long is the relation now? Uh, two years. And what does she years. do? She's a... Um, She works in the aesthetics field, so she produces wigs for females. She does makeup. She does eyelashes. She does eyebrows. Oh, great. Um, yeah, so she has, she's very, very good in that field, and she's creating her own business. It's a startup business that she created on her own from scratch, her own website, all of that. And, But she's uh, been there already in Groningen? Yes, she's came to visit a few times, yeah. A few times yeah, already? Yeah, yeah, a few times, yeah. And I saw a picture <clears throat> on Instagram stories. You were together in Dubai. Yes, so that was during uh, December. We had a break, and... Uh, I, th I think to the outside world, it probably looks like it was strictly vacation, but we were really going there to look for a supplier for her. So we're looking because in um, India, China and Dubai, um, they have meshes for a female. They have wigs and stuff. And that's where the real product comes from. So we went there and we went and found a supplier. So oh, there was an area in a city where there's a bunch of shops that are selling different products. And we looked and actually found the supplier. So now... From there, we can she can be able to bring that back to France and ship it out to different people. So that was the the point of the whole trip, and obviously. And what is the plan with your girlfriend? And what's the plan for the next couple of years playing basketball? Do you want to continue what you're doing right now? Yeah, I mean, I love basketball. I love what I'm doing. I believe you know God has put me on this earth to do this and to also influence younger kids in my community and the places that I've been to see what I've done as a player coming from. You know, a smaller town, not a D1 prospect, not uh, the tallest player. So I, f I feel like um, I can bring some encouragement to younger kids who think, hey, maybe I can do that too. So I want to continue playing, you know, as you know, as long as I can, as long as I'm healthy and able to do so. And, and being together with your and girlfriend. And being together with my girlfriend, of yeah. course. So Talking about what you just said, uh, uh, working with kids. Yeah. With the perspective for kids, uh, mm -hmm. you like very much to join a community of mm -hmm. uh, younger people, especially, of, of course, in Canada, where you were born. Yes, yeah. How frustrated is it now for you that you're not able to do anything because of Corona, because of all the, uh, the, 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 the rules that are uh, counting now? It's very tough because um, for me personally, um, it's much easier to connect with somebody when there's physical, when you, when it's in person, right? You can talk to them, you can understand them better. But now everything is done virtually through Zoom calls, and it's it's different. You have to find a different way to to portray your message that you want to send to the kid, and the attention spans are a little different. So, I'm hoping that you know. Things will obviously get better, and hopefully things will open up. That way we can get back to that communication and get, get back to that mentorship because I think that's something that I've really, you know, over the last three, four years, I've really done. Every time I've been back home, I've had camps, uh, my own camps, or I worked with Danny Green um, two summers ago, you know, from Toronto Raptors when, he, when they won the championship. That same summer I was able to work with him and, you know, learn a little bit from him and his staff as far as how they give back to their communities And I want to continue to do the same thing. So I really hope that in the future, in the near future, that Corona will, you know, be gone from us. Let's hope that. You got your own website. Um, this is Jared.com. Mm -hmm. And you use there the words, stay true, be great. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at the website, I saw that there's not many updates. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything about donor. Mm -hmm. How's that? Mm -hmm. Um I think it's timing also. I have some things in, in mind that I want to also put on the site as far as the education that I'm taking right now. Um, I have some things that I'm working towards that I'll be finished in a few months that I also want to uh, post on the site. But I Talk think, about it. What is that? What is that? Uh, so over the last two years, um, I did a business communication certificate at the University of Toronto online, and I'm currently taking a human resource management certificate at the University of Toronto online. Wow. So I'm almost finished this this last course once i finish this last course i'll be finished the certificate and that'll be two certificates that i have on top of my bachelor's degree uh, bachelor of arts in and a major of communication studies from the university of calgary so so we can expect some updates on the oh, website yeah, and of course sure. pictures of you for being sure a donor for and sure. things like that yes yes it's and in the plans I, i was trying to find you on socials but you're not very active active on social media <clears throat> uh yeah 
I post here, he, not now and then, but I'm not uh, always, always posting. But I, I think it's kind of a mood thing also. There's, there's times where I feel like, okay, now I need to, you know, put something out if I went to Dubai or what's going on. But I, I definitely think it's something I'll be more active yeah, in the future. Especially when you want to have contact with people in Canada, then right. social media is a great opportunity, of for course, sure. to use it. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, that's one of the means for us to really get in touch. And honestly, it's one of the means for other people to see what we're doing. Exactly. Right? So I definitely think, you know, in the near future, you know, getting more active on that will be something I'll be focusing on for sure. When we switch to basketball, you play here at Donard. Uh, mm -hmm. You're an important player, the point guard of the team. Mm -hmm. um, how is it? Uh, I'm not talking about the results of the game, but working with these guys. How does it feel if you compare it with the last couple of years in all countries that you played? Um, honestly, it's been great, man. It's been a very, very, very great experience. I just feel like there's a good chemistry with the guys. Everybody's very, everybody loves each other, man. Like it's a kind of family atmosphere. Um, it's rare to be on teams where the chemistry between everybody is so tight, like everybody is very close. So I think that's made it easy to get on the court and to to lead sometimes and sometimes to also have to follow, right? So it's been uh it's been a great experience. I'm enjoying it. I know um you know we, we haven't accomplished everything we wanted to with some some tough losses we've had this year. But FIBA Euro Cup especially. Yeah FIBA Euro Cup and you know Champions League but um that's part of the process, you know and we still have opportunity to win, and we still have other cups and, and championships that we're looking forward to. I heard that uh, 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 the last couple of years, we heard that a lot, that people uh, feel like a, one community here at Donor, that everybody appreciates it. Like you said, we love each other. Mm -hmm. um, could it be a reason in Martini Plaza, in Groningen, that it always, it's almost always the same, mm -hmm. that the, the, the close team feeling How's it possible? Does the community play a part in that? I think, I, I really truly think it does. You know, when I first heard about Donar, um, you know, it was through Ross Beckering, uh, somebody that I played with before at University of Calgary. He just said, like, this is the club in, in Holland. You know, this is one of the main clubs in Holland. They have a rich culture. They have a rich history. They come here, They you know, they want to win. You know, that's their ambition every year is to win. So as a player in the summertime, you know, you're getting – options and different looks from other teams but once you hear that this team is interested in you you already have to put in your mind that I'm going there to be a professional I'm going there to be respectful and I'm going there to give 100% every single day because that's this culture right it's it's either that or nothing right so knowing that you have to be a certain level you have to be a certain type of person to be able to even to play for this team I truly believe that right so people with good attitudes people who are respectful people who work hard people who don't aren't lazy right so it I fits. think it, it fits per per perfect it fits, fits right so I truly believe that they're looking for players who have those qualities and they're meshing them together right so that's I don't think it's by accident by any means okay when you when we look at your results in the game you, you got 15 points average a game almost 50 percent on the three-point shot If you compare yourself to the other point guards in the Dutch Basketball League, yeah. what do you see? Um, honestly, uh, I try not to. Um, like my whole career, what, I, what I've really done is just focus on myself, you know, focus on myself, focus on my team, how I can be better. Because at the end of the day, I can't control how good those other point guards play or how good those other teams play. All I can control is what I do in practice every day and how I prepare my mind and my body to, uh, to play, you know, in the game. So, you know, Here and there, you might look at the standings, look at the stats, but for me, it's it's more about okay, I'm competing with myself. I, I truly believe I'm competing with myself because nobody holds uh, myself to a higher standard than myself, if if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, then to uh, this time with Corona, still no audience here in Martini Plaza. It looks really great, but there's no audience here, mm -hmm. and people get a little bit tired of all the measures that are going on right now mm -hmm. and not able to do anything. People are now able to go to the barber shop again. Yeah, well, yeah. We, we can celebrate that almost. Yeah, for sure. Um, how's, how's that for you? Do, do, do you feel the, the, the sadness, the problems with Corona and all the measures? Or do you think, well, well, we can work on it and just have some time and wait? Um, I mean, it's obviously difficult and you have to look at everybody's in a different situation. It depends on your family situation. It depends on your working situation. Thankfully for us, we're still able to come in here and work and, and do our job. Um, but like we spoke about earlier, uh, getting in touch with family, you know, me taking a course, you know, I have things that are keeping me busy on a daily basis. So, of course, I would love to be able to go downtown and go to the shops and be able to travel a little bit. You know, that's 
that's part of uh, you know the blessing of being able to be a professional basketball player. But at the same time, I'm making sure that I'm spending my time on things that are going to help me improve, and that's obviously my education. Also, you know, spending quality time with my family on the phone, and you know, looking into investments and things of that nature. Like I have a small stock portfolio that I've been working on the past two years, and learning more about real estate and investments. So, I'm the, I'm one of those individuals who. I don't want to sit around and do nothing at home. I really want to. There's more than basketball. Yeah, I want to learn. I want to learn and I want to grow as an individual. Great. Well, it was, it was great talking to you, Jared. Um, maybe you have something to say to the people who are watching this all over the world, maybe people in Canada, <laughs> maybe the fans of Donar. And here's the camera for you. Okay. Um, to all the Donar fans, first and foremost, thank you for all your support throughout the whole season. I know it's unfortunate that you guys can't be here physically with us, but you know we're hopeful that maybe by the end of the season or that you guys will be able to be there for playoffs and we don't take that for granted you know we see what you how you guys support us on you know social media and the commentaries and things of that nature and to all my family back home I love all you guys I hopefully be seeing you guys soon and all my friends across the world not just Canada uh, stay safe follow the measures be patient and we'll get through this corona sooner than later thank you Jared thank you